Hi, everyone. Pastor Galen, lead pastor at Shine Hills Church. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. We hope that these podcasts will be a real encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. You can also connect with Shine Hills at shinehills.org. Hope you enjoy the program. We are across the street and around the world. Shine Hills. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. And today I have with me Renee Hinkle. Running for school board. Yes. And, and Renee, this is your first uh, time you've run for school board. Is that correct? It is the first time I've first run, First yes. time. So, I mean, is that is it more work, less work? What's it like to run for an office like this? Well, I mean, I think most of us think when you're running for something like school board, it would be not a huge deal, but it definitely is a lot of time, um, more energy, than you realize. effort than I realized it would be. But um, again, it's important, and I for think sure. the importance of it has been emphasized more this year, and so I think that may be why it's a bigger deal. I think you're right. Well, that's uh, you know, it's kind of why I'm involved in this. I've just been so exposed to so right. much that goes on. And and the and with our school board in particular, I I just want to just give a caveat. So we've been we've done a few of these, and Nathan Winters has been a part of these, and he's kind of a he's like the force, he's like the driving <laughs> force. I'm kind of I'm like s- second way behind him, and so I've got the questions pretty much that we've done with with the other interviews, and I'm going to do my very best to try to keep that you know kind of a standard so it's fair to everybody. But I but in any way direction you kind of like to swerve this as well. I want okay. you to have that freedom. So. Even to start off with a, a first wait first comment though, you are running for which I know there's there's an at large and there's three quadrant quadrants this year. Which what are you running for? I'm at large, which is citywide. You're citywide, yes. so everybody will vote for at large. Everybody in the city will vote. And for then at you'll large. then you vote for the one that's in your quadrant. So you'll right. vote so for two. Everybody will get two spots. So one, I'll, everyone will get an at large uh, list, and then. Whatever district they live in, you're from that district. That's the way I understand it too. So thank mm-hmm. you for that clarification. So what's your why? Why are, why is Renee Hinkle involved in this process? Okay. Um, well, first I'll tell you a little bit who I am, sure. and then I'll add that at the end. Perfect. Um, so I am an OBGYN physician here in town. Okay. Um, and I've um, I was in the U.S. Navy for 11 years. Um, okay. When I started having uh, my family, my husband at the time grew up here in Cheyenne. Um, and thought we should raise our kids here. And one of the main reasons was because of the strong public school systems that we have okay. here in Cheyenne. Um, and I grew up in Florida, and li- we lived in California for a while, and the school systems there are just not good. And so mm. trying to think about where you want to live and raise your family um, is important. And, and so the school sure. system here was a big reason why we came here. Okay. Um, so I've been here 24 years. Um, I've raised two kids here. I've delivered thousands of babies wow. in this community. Wow. Um, and um, again, I do have a passion for public education because I think it's a very important part of a community. Yeah. I really believe that a community is only as good as their public education because it can't thrive without um, a good public education system yeah. that produces um, good citizens um, who can go on to uh, to uh, be a, a contributor to the area. Right. You know, and whether those kids um, go to college or whether they do technical training, it doesn't really matter as long as we get them prepared for whatever they're going to do in the future. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that I'm so I think it's so important um, for uh, public education. Um, I um, have been on boards in Cheyenne uh, now for the 24 years I've been here, probably over 40 years of board experience. And so I think that board governance experience uh, lends uh, well to the uh, school board um, because it is a government-run board and we have to follow government protocols as far as open boards go. Um, But I'm running for the board mainly because um, over the last two years, especially, I think the board has been distracted from its main purpose. And so I think it's been distracted by national political issues um, and has kind of gotten off track a little bit in what the priority should be. So the main reason for the school board is to um, help student achievement is policies and procedures and um, uh, helping uh, the superintendent to increase student achievement, to increase um, our graduation rates and how well our students do in school and those types of things. And so I think we've gotten away from that. So all of our decisions should be based on student achievement. And I think we've just gotten away from that. So I want to try and get those political issues out 
of the boardroom and the classroom. Okay, very good. Thank you. That great introduction. So this is one of the, the questions that Nathan has, and it kind of fits where you were, you're going. And so I want to just read this. It said, this, a school board trustee is elected from the community to advocate for someone. Um, who are they advocating for? Are they are they advocating for the school administration, for the teachers, for the parents, other? This was a question that he had. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh, absolutely for student achievement, for students. I mean, that has to be our number one. That has to be every decision that is made within the board really needs to be made by the entire board for the purpose of the students and their achievement in school. Okay. Every student in the district needs to be able to have an equal opportunity for high quality education. Right. And so we are there to represent the students number one. Now our stakeholders, because students, you know, aren't adults, most of them, um, are, you know, we have to think about parents because they are the ones that are making decisions for those kids, for the mm -hmm. vast majority of them. We have to think about um, the teachers. Um, we have to think about the community at large, um, again, because Education is important for the community. Um, and we have to think about admin. So as a trustee, our only employee is the superintendent. So everything we do as a trustee um, is to make sure that superintendent, he or her, him, you know, whichever it is, mm -hmm. male or female, um, knows what our priorities are. And then he or she goes out and uh, works to achieve uh, those goals right. um, that we have set. Right. Very good. Okay, so then a follow-up question that that this comes out of a, a situation that actually happened in Sweetwater County uh, here in Wyoming, and uh, it concerns from local parents who were told that the school district had every right to withhold information from the parents regarding how their child would present themselves in school. This has created a scenario where the parents would be informed about um, whether the child could receive an ibuprofen for a headache and yet not talk about their identity. So you you said that the the main um, client is the student. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you think about that scenario? It would You know, those are those are tough issues and I've spoken to many teachers here in the district and these things do sometimes happen where student safety is considered paramount um, sometimes um, to what you know, the parents think is the most important. Um, it doesn't happen often. Um, but if a, if an instructor feels like there is information that might cause harm to a child, um, it is their obligation to try and prevent that from happening. I don't know about this particular one situation in Sweetwater County. Um, and I would not advocate for all teachers to withhold things from parents. Um, but if there is a safety issue, that is something that teachers are told. Their their main goal is to keep kids safe, and so they, I mean, they love our kids. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about our teachers sure. in this no district is that. that they love our kids and they want our kids to be number one. Yeah. And so they do a lot of things to um, help students. Um, from if a student is uncomfortable going to a certain bathroom, they'll let them go to the nurse's bathroom, things like that. So there are a lot of things that they do already mm -hmm. um, to try and help students. Um, but they, 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 the one in Sweetwater County, they were actually told that they must, they must not let those, um, those parents know whether what was going on with a student's identity or whatnot. Is that, do you have a thought on that? Is that a, because it's, it's probably coming to our, if it hasn't already, I don't know if it's come to our board yet or not. I'm sure it has. I mean, as far as I'm aware, and I've been yeah. going to most meetings for two years. Okay. So um, uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, it, that's a difficult situation because I, I, I don't think a teacher in this di district has ever been told you can't tell a parent something. Yeah. I feel like if they've ever withheld anything from a parent, it's because they feared for the child's safety. Yeah. One of the next things that I... I I interviewed, or not interviewed, not in here. I talked to a school board member. I had some concerns, had some questions, and I talked to the school board member. And I, the question I had was, you know, they had values. They, they said that they were, you know, they had certain values that I certainly agreed with. And I said, well, so it seems that how do you, how do you hold those values in check? And because the, the kind of policies you're putting in place, it seems, uh, whether it's curriculum or whether it's a, a policy, it seems like those values, from my perspective, are are being in check. And, and and that person at the time said, well, basically, I do have my personal values, but I can't let that impact how I 
vote and I, or how I stand on a particular policy. And it's, I know I've been thinking about that one a lot. And I've asked a lot of people, what's, what's your thoughts on, you know, you have values. Do you check those at the door? And then, um, because you do represent a lot of people or do, or should a person in a policy position keep their values? Does that make sense? Well, I think you have to keep your values, but I think you also have to realize that this is a position on a board for a, a, a school district, and a right. school district is a public entity. Um, and so we have to uh, follow federal guidelines, federal standards, um, because we do accept quite a bit of money from the federal government. So more than half of the money from the district is from the federal government. So it's not something where we can say, oh, we stand completely alone and separate and we don't have to follow these policies. So number one, you have to follow federal policies. Number two, um, you have to think about every student in the district. And every student in the district may not look like me. You know, they may not be a white Christian person living in a community like Cheyenne. They may um, have a different religion. They may be non-religious. They may have a different color skin. They may be from another country. Um, and so you have to think about all of those things. And so you have to back up a little bit um, from what I would think I want my kids to learn and say, okay, this is what the general public needs to learn. Yeah. And if I need to teach my kids something differently, um, you know, then I will do that at home. Right. Well, okay. So I had that, this very question with, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Fraley and cause we had a curriculum question. I want to ask mm -hmm. you about curriculum in a second here, but, um, was okay. So we, there's a, there's a curriculum about Hinduism. You know, mm -hmm. it gave me all the reasons why that was an important under social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. You know, we get this, we can, um, uh, that's the kind of the umbrella that covers a lot of the things that says we should, you know, there might be a child that's Hindu. Is there, but yet I do know that our teachers are, uh, there's no curriculum for biblical type. Uh, you say that we have the Christian value in there. Is there a curriculum that, that has that as well? I mean, is it an equal thing or just we have to say the Hinduism's in there because of, it slides under this one category. Uh, what do you, how do you, well, I think in that category, I think all religions kind of fall under that. I, I think if you look at the basic curriculum in general that we teach in Cheyenne and really in the United States, but in Cheyenne in particular, um, you'll see that the vast majority of the things that the kids learn is about Christianity because the vast majority of the people in this community are Christian. Um, and so by adding in um, uh, other religions, by adding in other ideas, by adding in other, um, you know, things that we may not agree with. It just, it just adds to their overall education. And that, we hope, the hope is that that will um, help decrease things like bullying and hate and sure. those types of things in the community. So the more you learn about something that's different from you, and the more you understand that, oh, you know, I don't agree with that, but that's you know, because that's different from what I think, but they think that, and, and that's okay, maybe we'll decrease that amount of hate that happens in this yeah. city. Okay. Um, the, um, under the, con the category of curriculum, there's some uh, curriculum in the school system, and the Toronto County has talked about, uh, has brought this up. They've got curriculum in the library that would be considered uh, pornography in, I think, by, by probably everybody. And yet they're in our libraries, and apparently that's in our libraries as well. Um, that's been a real concern of uh, what the, the the school has available for kids. And uh, I've got you know those titles of those books and some of them. And it's like, do you have a thought? It's, that's curriculum thing is going to come up. What's your thought on curriculum and on on some of these that fall into category of? I think most people in a bulletin board place uh, test would say, yeah, that's that's a pornography in about every condition. Um, it sounds like that's more of a book issue than a curriculum issue because the books that are being talked about it's, in the Toronto County are not in the curriculum, but they are in the library. That's right. At the school. Okay. Um, and so um, the two books that I know about from Natrona County um, are the Gender Queer yep. and the Trans Bodies. That's trans, right. That's exactly um, right. Those are the two. I don't know about the trans book, but we do not have a Gender Queer in the uh, libraries at our schools. Okay. Um, 
I'm sure it's available at our library downtown, but it is not currently in our schools. Um, I don't know about the trans, whether that one is available or not. Um, my opinion is I don't think they're porn, and I've said that at all the forums that I've Have been to. Have you seen the pictures that I've are seen in the them? pictures. I've okay. seen the pictures that I, I didn't read the book myself. Yeah. Um, there are some graphic pictures in there, yes. But do graphic pictures equal pornography? I don't think so. Hmm. Um, and the reason I don't think so is the definition of pornography is um, uh, pictures or words that are supposed to um, uh, uh, make somebody aroused. Um, and these books are not made for that. These books are not put out to arouse somebody. These books are put out to teach people, to uh, make people understand. There are people in our schools who have transgender feelings, who believe that they are a different sex than what they were born with. Um, and they may not understand exactly what that means or or what the options are when you have feelings like that. And so these books really are books that help teach them about that. Um, and it's it's factual. It's not um, uh, it's not put out there to be salacious or anything like that. It is put out there to say, okay, these are the things that happen. These are the things, you know, that you can expect, you know, in this type of um, transgender world, that type of thing. And so um, as long as the information is not put out to specifically arouse somebody in a sexual fashion, it's not pornography. Does that mean that everybody agrees with it? Absolutely not. Um, I, as a physician, I like the fact that there is information out there because, again, just like um, with the idea of the Hindu teaching and trying to decrease hate by increasing education and awareness, this is the same thing. If we can um, teach people about other ways of living that we may not agree with, whether we do or not, um, then maybe if somebody says, oh, well, again, I don't, I don't like it. That's not something I agree with. But those people are not horrible, awful people, no, and we sure. have to treat them as not, as yeah, no. normal citizens. No. And so we're hope the hope yeah. is that by helping those people, yeah. um, we can decrease that. And yeah. transgender especially has the highest rate of suicide in the country and in Wyoming. And so the more we can do to try and make uh, transgender people feel more comfortable, um, hopefully the more that'll decrease. So you think by, by exposing transgender uh, curriculum, that's, do you think that's lowering the cases of transgender transitioning? I don't know that it's lowering the case of transitioning. I'm hoping that it lowers the um, the For cases sure. of suicide. Yeah, I'm hoping that it lowers the cases I mean, of depression, of out. bullying. Yeah. Everybody you know. throws suicide out there, and we. No, I'm listen. No one has done more funerals than I have on suicide. And I, I've I wear been a here. yellow feather in my cap for this suicide awareness. I, I, I totally agree with you. But a lot of times that's thrown out there as okay. So that changes everything when it comes to you know convictions or policy and whatnot. It's like man, nobody wants that. Nobody wants no, bullying. Nobody wants bullying. I promise you that no Christian ever has gone through, you know, can teach bullying ever we we spend that time in our, in our youth group it's like man to love one another and to care for one another and whether it's somebody like you or not the, we've got to love one another no question about all those things the hard part is to you know it, it, but the the answer to that question is actually transgenderism in this last year because i you can decide whether it's because of whatever has increased 500 percent i mean that's not a natural flow <laughs> it's it's this on increasing thing it's like that's where these policies got to come in to say, okay, so are we are we encouraging it? Or are we helping? And I think that's the that's really the question. Just like homosexuality, transgender has been around since there have been people, um, and it's not a new phenomena. Uh, but up until fairly recently, um, it has not been allowed to be. You know, those people have not felt comfortable enough to be mainstream, yeah. and so they've done it in private. Um, or they moved somewhere else um, and presented themselves in a different way in another place. Um, and so it's my opinion of why it's increased is not because there are more numbers. It's just that it's become more acceptable. Those people feel more comfortable showing who they really feel like they are. I think the, the one thing, and I'm looking in, in, end on this one, and then if you have any other thing you would like to make sure to, I want to make sure you cover. But I think the one thing that um, has been difficult for 
for me from this whole beginning of this is age appropriate. Mm -hmm. You know, we can talk about all these books and we've, there's a lot of them and uh, that have been, I've looked, I've got them in my, I've got them and I've, I've seen them. I know it's, a, and the question I've continued to ask is, okay, so that is, that's a kind of a junior high age appropriate. But why is it in the second grade classroom? And do you, do you have any, and, and even some of these topics we're talking about right now, um, some believe, yeah, we should have these uh, this curriculum for grade schoolers because we need to help them. They they truly, in my my opinion, they truly believe that helping them as a second or third or fourth grader is is a righteous thing to do. That's my opinion. I I can't say I've heard any of it, but that's my because I believe they're good people. They just have a different opinion. Do you think that is there an age appropriateness for some of these things, or do you do you think that? Am I barking up the wrong tree on this one? I, you know, I, I think the idea behind what you're talking about, and, and I'll talk about whether I think that there's age-inappropriate books in our library. Okay. Um, but the idea that you're talking about of, uh, of having materials that say basically it's okay to have gay parents, to have two moms or two dads, or to have, um, you know, a dad who's now presenting as a female, because those things happen um, is why that push is kind of happening in some places, is just to make those kids feel like they're seen, like their situation is normal. It's the same idea behind trying to have more books in the library that have female characters or trying to have books that have more black characters or brown characters um, or gay characters or trans characters, is that the more we can get um, like-minded people into uh, literature and things like that, the more comfortable people will feel like, oh, well, maybe I am an acceptable American citizen even though I'm brown or maybe even though I'm Hindu or maybe even though I'm a gay person. And so that's the idea behind the, uh, you know, having some exposure to that at a lower grade. Now, in our schools, and, and our current school board did approve our current school uh, book uh, acquisition uh, policy because there are age-appropriate rules. So all books in the United States um, that um, our librarians look at um, have age ranges on them. And none of the books that are in our lower grades have higher grade approval. So they have books that are K through 6 or K through 8. Um, and the K through six are only allowed in the lower grades and, and, and then the middle school grades are allowed in those. And then the secondary, the high school ages are allowed in those. And you can get a book as a high schooler from the elementary school in a library transfer, but you can't get a book from the high school down into the elementary school, um, as a school transfer. So there are school policies in place. Our librarians do a fabulous job of making sure that the books are age appropriate now, whether as an individual person you think that that is something that your your six year old should learn or not, that's up to you as the parent. And so we do have this opt out policy. And if there is a book that you feel like is is inappropriate, then definitely saying no, I don't feel like that's appropriate to read. Um, you know, it's very similar. There have been some issues in schools recently where teachers are 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 being kind of bullied um, by parents about teaching certain topics. But yet that parent is allowed to keep their kid from from participating in that if they want to. So I, I, I think it's just important to know that parents do have that right. Every parent has the right to under to decide what their child should or shouldn't learn and can work with the librarians or the teachers or the school administrators to uh, to back out of certain things if they want to. Very good. Anything else that you want to cover here? that we didn't touch on? Maybe you have a, um, a thought that came up as we were going through all this and say... No, I, I mean, I think those the are the, the main things. Yeah. I, you know, I think those are the things that are mostly in yeah. my notes. Um, I do just want to emphasize that, you know, and I'm sure all of us that are running for the school board is, you know, the students and their their learning is the most important thing for us okay. and, and, and trying to incorporate all kids, you know, whether that's um, you know, kids from the north part of the town or the south part of town, sure. even though um, a candidate might be voted in from a certain district, they still have to represent all of the districts. And so they still have to represent all students. And that is our goal. And I strongly believe that as a group of trustees, 
we have to work together and make every decision we make about the student's um, education. Very good. Renee, thank you. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you. And uh, I appreciate you sharing your views. And as we say to you, um, as we check off and sign off on our our podcast this morning, uh, continue in your journey. Make sure you're informed. Make sure you understand who's uh, running and what quadrant they're in. It's kind of a new election this year. And be strong and very courageous. God bless you guys. 